Good afternoon, everybody. Yesterday, your assignment was to watch the documentary, The Rachel Divide. I'm going to get straight to the point. Please keep your fingers ready to answer the questions in the chat box. It's very important that you do because I will be reviewing everything to look at the answers and because I feel like it's very good when this is interactive instead of me just sending you a video to watch. The first question I have to ask, I'm going to do some simple questions just to make sure that we know, we all know what we're talking about. Who is Rachel Dolzel? Just in a simple sentence, type it up. Remember, there is a little bit of, there's a delay, so you will see some of my interactions after you see them on, on video. You'll see my interactions in the chat box with you. Some people were upset at Rachel. Some people are still upset at Rachel. I'd like you to, in simple words, type it up. Why were some people upset at Rachel? And why? And what kind of people were upset at her? The next question I'm going to ask, it's not necessarily a question that has, how do I put it, a right or wrong answer, if you know what I mean. What I'm asking you next has something to do with your personal assessment of this situation. I specifically asked you to draw your own conclusions about it and the reason why I asked you to do that is because I think it's important for us to have a discussion where you're able to express your opinion about it, to be critical, to think with your own logical reasoning. So here my question is, do you think people really had a reason to be upset at Rachel? Do you think they blew this kind of out of proportion or was there a reason for them to be mad at her? Again, this is your personal assessment of the situation. Do you think they were right to be upset?
I'm going to provide my own opinion on this. Of course, I'm not saying that my opinion matters more because I'm a person of color. But I feel like my opinion brings some of the discussion to light and perhaps you might understand the side of the people who got upset. Yes, I believe they had a genuine reason to be upset. And I'll tell you why I think they should have been upset. Is it okay for her to do wigs that sort of mimic African American wigs or African American hairstyles? The fact that she did her makeup a little darker? Does that upset me? No, it doesn't. That doesn't upset me in the least. I feel like maybe she looked a little silly with those hairstyles, but that's just a, my personal take on it. But that didn't do any harm to anybody. If you really think about it, the real harm in what she did had nothing to do with her wanting to look, look black. The real harm in what she did, and again, this is my personal take on it and why I think other people might have been upset. She took a job, a very important job, as the NAACP director or president. She had leadership. She had a leadership position. This even hurts to talk about. I just, my, my blood boils for it when I think of how upset people might have been for this. When the reason why she got that position was based on the premise that she was a black woman. The N, I keep, I keep saying it really slowly because I used to say NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. I used to say it, I used to say NAACP, but um, a very close friend of my family's actually became the director, president. She had she took that leadership position after Rachel was gone. Isn't that neat? I actually know the person who took that position later on. She is a black person. She represents civil rights and she does a lot of work. You will get an opportunity to hear from her later on in our course of studies. Her name is Dr. Jasmine Young. And she became the president. I keep saying president or director. It's because it's not quite clear to me how um, what the title is. But it is, in fact, a leadership position. I don't think that, that Rachel should have had that position. Because it is um, she got it under a fake premise. They gave her that job thinking that she was a black woman. Having said that, I do think her intentions of fighting for black rights, of being so active with everyone else in the cause for Black Lives Matter, I think that's a beautiful cause and people of any color should be involved in it. So we need more people who are not people of color to also be in the fight against racism, against the problems with equality, not only in the United States, but everywhere in the world. So that is a beautiful thing. What was not nice was pretending to be black to get that position. 
in the documentary. Now, this is a question, and I want you to type your answer, please. In the documentary, she presented her reasons for feeling this way, for doing what she did. She never comes out clearly and says it. And I have watched a lot of interviews with her. I have read extensively about her. What did you get from this situation? What do you think her reasons were? Not only on a logical sense on, on how she explained it, but after watching the documentary, what do you think her reasons were? For pretending to be black. Please type in your answers. Write simple answers. You will write something more elaborate in the future. Right now, I just want answers that are concise, straight to the point. Remember, a sentence is only a sentence if it is a complete unit of thought. A complete unit of thought means it will have a subject and a verb, minimum, for it to be a sentence. And I'm reading your answers and interacting with you, although there might be a little bit or a lot of a delay when I do it. You have been doing a lot of different studies in regards to the history, the culture, everything that associates with English as a foreign language and the, basically international English is supposed to give you an overview of English around the world. The United States, and we have talked about the Americanization of the world, is at the center of a lot of it. Do you think something like that happened in America, but it could have happened it could have happened anywhere in the world. Do you think that could have happened anywhere else? And do you think people would have been as upset anywhere else? Please type in your answer. Again, this is your opinion based on what you know. We studied one of the chapters of the book talked about the different ethnicities in England, and there were people of different backgrounds in England. We read a text, there was a cab driver complaining about people from other countries living in England. Let us just say that they create an association for people from Bangladesh and then a white guy pretends to be from Bangladesh. Would that community be as upset? Do you think if it were any other race, ethnicity, or group, ethnic group, do you think people would have been this upset? And why? If there is such a thing as cultural appropriation, cultural appropriation in its highest form, this is a good example of it. People will use it as a reference. So um, many, many sitcoms, dramas, movies will mention her as a reference for a joke when they talk about People pretending to be something that they're not or saying fake. I've heard 
I can't tell you which sitcom it was in, but I heard at some point the phrase, oh, this is as fake as Rachel Dolezal. So um, I reached out to her after showing the documentary to Vege Anne. I reached out to her for an interview. She wouldn't grant me an interview. I only got like a, a short statement from her. And um, it is on my TikTok. And you will be able to um, see what she said. But she wouldn't grant an interview. She would only speak at length for money that I can't afford to pay. So here is the assignment for the day. I want you to, in your own assessment, your own opinion about this situation, what do you personally think about this whole thing? What she did was in fact fraud. But do you think people should have been as upset as they were? Why or why not? If the situation happened with a different ethnicity, let us just say that somebody starts coloring their hair blonde, bleaching their skin, not somebody 100% black, but let us just say somebody who is mixed, pretending to be 100% Norwegian, wearing a boo nod, and talking about the culture, talking about Norway, going around, do you think it would be the, it would be the same? And if you don't think it would be the same, why can't we compare these two things? Why can't we even begin to put them in the same platform? So I want you to explore the possibilities that you see of culture and race. And do you think it is possible for somebody to be transra transracial? to represent themselves. So I'll put the link for you to watch that short video with her statement. And I'll also it would probably be a good idea for me to write this down for you, the questions that I want answered. I want you to write a paragraph. Remember, a paragraph has to have between 10 and 12 sentences. And by sentences, I mean at least a subject and a verb. Feel free to use words like however, notwithstanding, therefore, even though, although, I want you to write a good paragraph about this, covering some of the topics that I put out for you. Why was it wrong? Was it wrong? Did people have the right to be upset? Do you think they blew it out of proportion? 